Welcome back everybody, it's Daddy1424 and I'm here with another video for you today. We got FIFA 16 versus FIFA 17 in it and it's going to be quite interesting. We have them both up side by side and we're going to get a chance to kind of take a look at the visuals, the gameplay, the mechanics, what actually is different between the two games. I mean, is it worth going out and picking up FIFA 17? I mean, honestly, most of you are probably going to go do it regardless of this video because at the end of the day, you know, people like me, people like us, the community, we're FIFA holics and we're going to keep playing FIFA year in and year out. But that doesn't mean the game has changed a lot. And that's kind of what we're here to take a look at today. So remember to like, two thumbs up, of course, subscribe, and leave some comments down below if you haven't done so already. Join the community, the family that is. Thank you so much for the support on the last video. And uh, let's go ahead and dive into this one here. So. On the left of your screen, you're going to notice we have FIFA 16, and of course, on the right of your screen, we have FIFA 17. And we're looking at the introductions here, just kind of taking a look at the differences between some of the character models that we're going to see, uh, the environments, the gameplay mechanics, and, and, and whatnot. And obviously, I'll cover things as they come up throughout the match. Now, one of the first things I wanted to talk about was visual uh, updates from FIFA 17 to 16, because one of the things that they stressed so importantly was that the crowd visuals we're going to be different and we're going to be revamped uh, player models the new frostbite engine uh, but i'm going to be honest with you here and i'm going to say that i don't think the frostbite engine really comes into play i mean i'm not saying it's not in play at all but i don't think it really is going to have that same effect in something like ultimate team as compared to the uh, the new my career mode uh, that you play as, as alex hunter i see more of the frostbite engine being implemented into there so on both match, I just wanted to point this out. You'll notice we have the same two teams playing. We have Manchester City up against Bayern Munich. Obviously, the rosters are not going to be exactly the same, uh, but we did try and you know have as much as we could in terms of the same starting players on each particular side. So you will notice the same two matches going on simultaneously. Uh, that being said, starting with the visual aspects of it, I really don't see a difference in the crowd environment for FIFA 17 as opposed to the FIFA 16. Uh, in fact, in some of the gameplay, uh, I do notice that on FIFA 17, some of the characters are a little bit leaner uh, and seem to be more authentic to the build of the player themselves in real life, where FIFA 16 doesn't have that as much. Not to say it doesn't exist, it's just a little bit more refined. You'll notice on the facial structures uh, within FIFA 17 that they seem to be a little bit more authentic. and. You'll reference this point towards the end of the video, uh, and I won't spoil it, but Thomas Muller, there'll be a close-up of him, and you can kind of see that more aged depth looking in the skin. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out on 4K because the uh, the PS4 Pro, apparently uh, FIFA 17 is one of the games that's going to support that 4K content. So it will be interesting to see what kind of difference that makes uh, in comparison to the general run-of-the-mill console or your PS4 Slim, depending on what you have, because obviously processing, uh, there's a bit of a difference there between the two. Now, I think outside of the character models, uh, again, being a little bit more refined on FIFA 17, uh, maybe some of the lighting a little bit better, and of course you can notice the pitch has a much more uh, popping kind of texture, so to speak, and that gives more of a refined look as well. Um, so visuals, I would... I'm actually, I have to say it's not that big of an upgrade, but what we do see is that huge upgrade are the gameplay mechanics within the game itself. And anyone who's playing the FIFA 17 demo can probably attest to this. FIFA 16 was a game that was more derived on, uh, you know, I'd say pace to some extent, using pace at the right place. The driven pass was highly important, uh, passing in general. Uh, FIFA 17 uh, focuses more, I, I feel at least at this junction, on the build-up play. You can actually support a lot more of that tiki-taka kind of mentality and style. Dribbling is hugely important, I find, in FIFA 17. And, you know, I think it's going to be a huge factor when going into Ultimate Team. Granted, at the end of the day, we are talking about single-player mode here versus Ultimate Team. Gameplay plays different. That's understandable. Uh, but dribbling and strength are going to be two huge important factors. So players such as Wayne Rooney, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I believe are going to be great. I think even some of the underrated guys, Memphis Depay, uh, you know, some of the smaller guys, Frank Ribery, you'll notice him here in the dribbling, some of the opportunities he gets, uh, and just being able to exploit that pace, that dribbling, and that strength. I think that those are three main components that are going to be in FIFA 17 as opposed to uh, FIFA 
16 had more of the driven pass and the pace, but didn't really necessarily have too much in terms of the strength. But you can notice that. One of the things I will say as I play between the two games, it definitely took an adjustment going between the two. I haven't played FIFA 16 in quite some time, uh, but FIFA 17 I have been playing in the past few days. And uh, just to touch upon some of the new mechanics they implemented, one in particular was the, uh, I guess it's like the contain, where you can kind of turn your back into the player in FIFA 17 and use your strength to muscle them off the ball and then turn. Now what is great about FIFA 17 and what it does so eloquently is when you pull that you know maneuver off, it gives time for the remaining players to kind of flank in and move and fill in the lanes. And they do that properly. And it creates so many opportunities where you'll see a player will kind of post up. Someone will jet by him, for example, like Douglas Costa. And then you can kind of just feed that through ball through and it gives a great opportunity. And in FIFA 16, it's more kind of fast-paced. FIFA 17 kind of, although it is fast-paced, it has more opportunity for pauses, which create opportunities uh, and goals because your players and your AI is actually stronger. I will say I found the defense to be also a lot better on FIFA 17. Uh, when you're talking about FIFA 16, uh, the defense was making a lot of errors. I noticed that when you're trying to tackle and you're switching players, the player actually kind of tends to either run a little bit forward, drop forward, or drop back. And it loses position of the man marking, uh, especially in the defensive box, which uh, obviously creates a lot of errors and a lot of opportunities for the opposing team. And you'll see that in the FIFA 16 game uh, when Manchester City scores. They get into the box and the defense does not do a good job of containing that man-to-man -man defense and covering where they need to be or being in the positions they need to be. In FIFA 17, that's not the case. They're always in the right position. And when you're tackling or when you're switching players, your AI is not you know, jolting forward or jolting back. They're going to stay in that right position when you're switching that player. The AI is not as as clunky or as, as flunky. I don't even know if that's the correct term, but it's more refined. And that defense, you're going to be able to pull off those midfield tackles and regain possession of the ball. Uh, you'll even see later on in the FIFA 17 that you got here, again, on the right side of the screen, uh, there will be an opportunity where Thomas Muller towards the end will take the ball uh, from the defender in his own defensive zone. And you don't find those opportunities happen as much in FIFA 16. The driven shot is definitely back in, uh, or the finesse shot, driven shot, is definitely back in FIFA 17. Uh, guys like Kevin De Bruyne are going to get some fantastic, that's another key component. It has much more uh, flexibility. Players play like they do in real life. Like People like Kevin De Bruyne, he's going to nail that long shot from outside the box and he's clinical in that regard. So FIFA 17 really does a good job of catering to each individual player. One player, you know, ironically that I felt wasn't as OP as I expected was actually Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I played with him in a Manchester uh, United match and it wasn't as good. Um, so, you know, take it for what you will. On the other hand, though, guys that are, are more well-versed, they don't just have particular strengths. For example, like Paul Pogba, who has that strength, he has that speed, he has that dribbling. It becomes more of the complete package and those are the guys that are going to be harder to defend, uh, particularly in a match. Uh, you see that FIFA 17 actually kind of cut off the screen there. Uh, we had a little bit less game time. I found the cutscenes were quicker in FIFA 17 as opposed to FIFA 16. So obviously that created uh, more time with the FIFA 16 feed. But all in all, I, you know, I just want to touch upon it and say the gameplay is much more refined in FIFA 17. And that's the big change at the end of the day. The visual aspect of it, it's not huge. You're going to get the same visual fidelity, uh, fidelity for the most part. The crowds, they're not different. You're still going to have those creepers off in the stand or, or off, the, off in the sidelines. My apologies are off in the stand. They've added some more animations, uh, obviously, with the coaches. Uh, facial structure has been a little bit revamped. Uh, gameplay has been majorly revamped. Um, and you'll notice that. You'll feel the difference. You, your defense and your offense, your pacey players, your dribbling players, and your, your more collective are going to be more important. The guys that can do it all, the guys that they play more one-to-one -one how they play in real life. Guys like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, not to say that they're not fantastic, but they don't have uh, quite as good as pace as, say, someone, for example, like Frank Ribery. So you're going to get... Uh, I find a, a more well-rounded players are going to be fantastic. Guys like Pierre Emerick, Obama Yang, Obama Yang are going to be fantastic. Diego Silva is probably going to be fantastic. Kevin De Bruyne, Wayne Rooney, you're going to get those guys are really going to stick out this year. Probably even Wilfred Boni, just to name a couple guys that I think could be uh, really good in this game. 
um, and you'll notice it as you play the demo. But like I said, from a visual standpoint, uh, expect pretty much the same. So ultimately, is it worth the upgrade? I'd say for you, uh, if you're a person about that gameplay and that means a lot to you, absolutely. I think Ultimate Team is going to be much more competitive this time around. Um, if you're playing it for the visual fidelity, then pick up the My Career Mode because I think you're going to experience that much better than you will in the FIFA, um, you know, compared to the FIFA 16. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video or if you want to see any other comparisons. It's fantastic what putting the game side by side and playing them actually shows you to how much they have evolved. Uh, so give it a shot. You know, play one and then go back and play the other. If you guys enjoyed this video, like I said, smash the like button, subscribe, and of course comment down below. Check out my previous video. I will have linked in the uh, description and you'll have one of the info cards above for that as well. I hope to catch you guys on the next video. We'll have the PS4 Slim unboxing probably for you guys. I'm not sure when, but catch me on the next one for some more FIFA content and PlayStation reviews.